Hi there. Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. And as you can see, we have been infested with bugs. I think we got more people submitting bug drawings than I think we've ever had. I think there were several hundred bugs that were appeared as a result of last week. It's funny because I wasn't even sure if you guys would want to draw bugs, but clearly you do. So we will have to do that again. That was really fun. So um, the leaf blowers are here today. You know, it's the last leaves. The trees have just given up their last leaves this week, and they've done it with a vengeance. So there's, there's this, we're knee deep in leafage, and uh, those guys are having a heck of a good time outside. So um, that is going to be one of the, one of the uh, guests that you're going to hear today is the leaf blower. We also have another guest, Kate Lagali, is going to join us and uh, to talk about colored pencils. We're going to do that in a second. That's because she is teaching a special work workshop for us at Sketchbooks, a watercolor pencil workshop. I've talked to you about it before. It's coming up this Saturday. This is the last time I'm going to talk about it, all right? Um, it is going to be this Saturday. You can sign up for it. If you're a member of Spark, I certainly hope you'll be there because it's it's free for you. But if you aren't and you would like to join us to learn about watercolor pencils, please do. We'll see you on Saturday, Saturday day after tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, Kate, here's Kate. Here she is. Hi, Hi. Kate. Thanks Hi. for joining us. So, um, where where are you, Kate? I am in North Carolina, in a rural area of North Carolina. So you have leaf blowers. I may have chickens growing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, my, my next door neighbor has chickens too. So um, yeah. that's one of the benefits of living in a big city like I do, is we have chickens and leaf blowers. So, <laughs> so yes, good. So um, I just wanted to have you on here to just talk a little bit about your workshop. First of all, tell us a bit about your experience with colored pencils, because you are one of the masters of it. You're a member of uh, in of the American, what is it called? The American the colored, colored, pencil, colored Pencil Society of America. Yeah. So what is that? Is it, do you like have regular meetings where you wear special robes and discuss the, <laughs> the latest pencil sharpeners? Exactly. What is that exactly? That's exactly what we do. So um, I'm actually currently the president of our local chapter. So there's mm -hmm. chapters around the country and it's a big national organization. They have a once a year conference. And I'm teaching this year. I'm one of the instructors at their conference this year, and it's in Florida in August, which the weather's Hopefully. going to be really hot. Um, Hopefully it'll happen. They, and then they have, they have chapters that have like maybe six meetings a year locally. So really, it's they're fun. I, I've been a part of those for since the 90s. Fantastic. So so, so you've been, has, 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 have color pencils been your medium all along? So I started out, actually, I did my thesis in college as a, um, I was an abstract acrylic painter. And if you see my work now, you're like, huh, she was an abstract painter. But I drew realistically. When I got out of college, I had, I moved into a efficiency apartment and I didn't have a studio anymore. And I used to do huge paintings. So I thought, well, that's not going to work. So I went to the art store and that's when I bought my first set of colored pencils. And um, I started teaching myself how to do them. And uh, that was that would have been in 1986. So I've been doing them since then. Fantastic. I still work in other mediums, but that's probably my main medium. So your um, your work is beautiful. We're going to look at a little bit of it later Thank on. You. We're going to look at your at your sketchbook actually, um, and your your um, sort of other studies and preparatory things that you do. Um, if people wanted to see your work, they can certainly they can Google you, um, but also they mm -hmm. can go to sketchbookschool.com and you can see some examples of Kate's work there. It's really, I'm, I'm always amazed by people who use media that we kind of take for granted that we know. I mean, we've all used colored pencils since we were using, you know, working in coloring books, but then you suddenly realize there are all kinds of amazing things one can do with this medium that I had no idea about. Um, yeah, you can stretch it a lot. What are some and of the kinds of things that you, that you do to go beyond just what one would expect? Well, with regular colored pencils, I use, um, I like to use a, um, a solvent. So I use rubbing alcohol a lot 
you can use like terpenoid, um, Goo Gone. I, I like Goo Gone gel, but I use rubbing alcohol the most because it's the it has the least fumes. But you can take um, a regular colored pencil and you can make it look like paint if you use a solvent. So that's really fun. I so that stretches the medium. And then the surfaces that I work on. Um, sometimes I work on wood or, you know, metal, or, you know, I use a, a ground and then I can work on metal. Um, I don't know. I just, I try, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very experimental. So I always try to take a medium and stretch it in different directions and see what it'll do. And I do that with all the mediums that I work in, but um, yeah, probably solvent's probably the most unusual. Working on um, a Duralar um, mat, it's a clear paper that you can work on both sides. That also stretches it. It's really cool stuff you can do with that. So you work on both sides. You can do values on one and color on the other. So I do that a lot. Um, you know, just different surfaces, different painterly things. Watercolor pencils, I like. I like those because I can make a lot of really neat textures. Um, things that I can't get anything else to do. No other medium will do. Like you know, and I'll show some of those in the workshop. But the textures that I do, I think, are the most fun. So what we're going to do in the workshop is we're going to do like a little bit of experimentation stuff, but then we're going to work on making one beautiful image using lots of different techniques and different right. tools to kind of push pencils in these new and different directions. I think watercolor pencils is something we all you sort of familiar with, you know, you know that like you can color something with a colored watercolor pencil and then you can slap it with some water and it'll kind of do some stuff. It'll turn into liquid or you can dip your watercolor pencil into water, but there's so much more that you can do and so many different ways of, of combining it with layering and, and wet and dry and so forth. So I think in a lot of ways, it's, it's even has the ability to be even more sophisticated than just watercolor in terms of the things that you can learn to do. It does even more. So it's going to be very exciting and, and, and a challenge to, to do a lot of Yeah, it's stuff. my current, watercolor pencil is my current obsession. I, I um, started using it in mixed media. I, I like probably most of the people that are watching right now, um, I have, I had sets of them. I don't, I don't even know how many I had. People would give them to me as gifts and I just had them in like on a shelf and I didn't do anything with them. And then I got them out one day and, and used them in some of my mixed media pieces. And then, and then it dawned on me like a few years ago, you know, I could, should just see what these will do just by themselves. And that's when I stretched them in all different directions. And so right now I'm doing probably more personally for my own art. I'm doing more watercolor pencil than anything else. Cause I'm finding it to be really fascinating. So I'm enjoying yeah. the process and it, it's amazing what they can do. They're very versatile and extremely useful to have. So, I mean, I'm finding I have, I mean, Windsor Newton sent me all these colored pencils um, earlier in the yeah, year. <laughs> and I just find that I'm used, they're just who, what I turn to now. I mean, I just, I'm not really using my regular watercolors nearly as much as I am using these things because you can start thinking that you're going to use a pencil and then you can say no i want to start to vary it and you can go in lots of different directions and not to mention that it's just it's right there it's it's easy it's you don't have to sort of squeeze out tubes and also you have a lot of colors but then you can create more and more and you can mix them just like you would mix watercolor colors mm -hmm. you know, and create new ones. i agree I, so i have gotten out because i'm a watercolor painter mm -hmm. i've gotten out my watercolor very little in the last three years because I've done it all with watercolor pencils exactly. and I, you know, the Windsor and Newton, gosh, they have some colors in there. So my favorite is plum, but I have several, several of their colors that are just fantastic. I'm using those more than anything else right now. I agree with you. Um, I, I find their watercolor pencils to be exceptionally good. Yeah, so they're I'm really, very good. Pleased. they are really good. And um, mm -hmm. so, yes, we're going to learn more about it. So hopefully everybody will, be joining us on Saturday. Um, if you can't come live for some reason, we do record all of the workshops and we um, will make it available to you and you have lifetime access to the recordings, to all the materials. If you are signing up for it, make sure you go to the class in advance because you're going to want to watch a couple of preparatory videos that Kate has made. You're going to want to download um, some uh, certainly you're going to want to get your supplies together. Um, and you don't have to use Windsor Newton watercolor pencils. You can really use other brands if that's what you have. Um, we are recommending Windsor Newton because we like them. But, um, you know, and also if you find you don't have the materials, you can always just sit and watch and learn and listen. And then later on, you can actually roll up your sleeves and jump in when you're 
materials arrive. So there's lots of different ways people take our, our workshops, and um, but they're always fun. It's just so much fun to sit on a Saturday morning with several hundred other people and uh, make some stuff and learn some, some cool things. So it's going to be really fun. And you're an, you're an amazing and experienced teacher, so it's going to be a uh, next-level experience for all of us. It's the first time we've done a watercolor pencil thing anyway, so... Oh, good. <laughs> yes. All right, good. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you day after tomorrow. All right. Uh, see you then. Hope to see everybody else as well. All, All right, right, cool, Thanks. good. Excellent. Thanks. Bye, Kate. All right, All right. bye, Danny. All right, good. Well, there we have it. <laughs> there we have it. And uh, I hope that that, that uh, gave you a sense of who Kate is and what this is going to be like. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's get to today's drawing business. Um, Today we're going to draw farm, something to do with a farm. I, I thought a, th a theme around um, every aspect of a farm would be interesting. You know, uh, animals, buildings, equipment, supplies. It could just be a cool opportunity to just kind of ex stretch out and uh, try lots of different kinds of drawings. So I'm going to be drawing in the Cappuccino book by Hannah Mula, which is uh, a really nice sketchbook that has beautiful the, the color of this reminds me of a nice cup of tea it's like the perfect it's like I, I could take a piece of this paper and i could say if you're going to make me a cup of tea make sure it matches this but it is called cappuccino it's not called cup of tea so maybe they need to rename it but um yeah so i'm going to be drawing on that i think because we've been talking about pencils i have to use my pencils so i'm going to be dragging out some pencils and um you know, I think we're going to draw quickly and a lot. So get yourself ready. If you want to work on a single page where you put everything into a single page, that's cool. You can do it that way. Um, I'm trying to think of where to start. What color I want to start with. Maybe I'll just work in brown. Might be nice. Work in brown. So, all right, let's get to it. Um, so here, you're going to see, you'll see me drawing down here. And here you will see our subject. If you are ready for that, here we go. Here's our very first subject. Let's start. Um, let's start with just a little critter, and see where he goes. Let's see. Oh, she in this case, a chicken. Let's just try drawing a little chicken, a little chicken thing. If you've never drawn a chicken, you know. It is, uh, <coughs> it is a nice subject. Um, as I said before, my neighbors have chickens. And recently we had a terrible, terrible night where some creature got in and attacked the chickens. It was really horrible. And um, yeah, the chickens were decimated. I think, I think there were, I forget how many chickens there were exactly, but um, there were seven or eight chickens, I think. And when, the, when this creature was done, there were only two left. And that was very sad. And then, about a week ago, we were sitting in our living room, which has a window looking out onto the garden, and what did we see? A fox, a giant fox. Like, I mean, big, way bigger than Twiggy. Walked as casually as you like right across our lawn. So it's possible that that's what that was that attacked these chickens. But our neighbor thought it was a weasel. Here I am in the middle of Phoenix, the fourth largest city in the United States. And uh, these are the kinds of issues that we're dealing with, chickens and foxes. I can tell you, in New York City, that never happened. The only chicken 
was at the KFC down the street. All right, so there's my chicken. How's your chicken coming? Are you ready for us to move on? I think we're going to move. We're going to move quickly. We're moving quickly, folks. Moving through the farmyard. So get ready for a cow. Some of you may remember a while ago I drew a cow when I was drawing my when I was trying to explain how it is when she, the appropriate the right way to make cappuccino. And uh, I was trying to explain how one gets milk from a cow to make cappuccino. And there were hoots of derision. People were laughing at my extremely artisanal recipe for making the perfect cup of coffee. So far, no cows here in Phoenix. Although on the road out of town, they do have signs that have um, has a, a donkey on the sign. At first, I was like, what does this mean? Does this mean don't be an ass when you're driving? But no, there are wild donkeys wandering around. Wild donkeys. Again, the city is still adjacent to the Wild West. Have you been watching the new season of All Creatures Great and Small? I hope you have. It's here on PBS. And, uh, Maybe that's what inspired me to pick a farm as the subject. I don't know. All right, there's a cow. I'm going to move across the page and I'm going to do some. I think I'm going to try and fit everything into one page. I forget how many things I wanted to draw, but I'm going to try and keep that in mind now. All right. They don't have these on all things, all creatures great and small, but uh, this is like a, what is it, like a combine or harvester or thresher or I don't know I'm a New Yorker I don't know about these things but this is this is a pretty cool machine I gotta say pretty cool pretty beefy these are these things like a lot of this farming equipment has gotten super sophisticated now and like I think they now have like tractors that are self driving like autonomous um, autonomous self-driving tractors robotic farmers Very cool machine. I could easily spend several hours drawing this thing, I think. It's got a lot of cool stuff on it. Oops, you can't even see what I'm doing. Um, a lot of cool knobs and gears and yeah, I like that. It's probably one of these things that costs like a half a million dollars or something. Just designed to uh, get farmers in debt. So. All right. There's a little harvester deal, whatever that is. Um, let's see what we got next. Okay. A duck. That's a nice looking animal. I 
talked before about this movie that I've kind of obsessed with, which is called, I think it's called The Biggest Little Farm, which is about um, this couple who start a farm in California. It's a documentary. And he is, or was, a docu- um, like a documentary cinematographer. So he makes incredible images. So over the course of eight years, he documents this farm and all of the things that they go through to make, to revive this farm. It's really a cool movie. And um, there's a scene, spoiler alert, I'm going to give away a little part of the plot, but there's a scene where they um, suddenly discover that all of their fruit trees are infested with snails. And they've made a commitment to not use insecticides and stuff like that. They want to figure out ways of naturally coping with these problems. And so they discover that they can just bring in their ducks. And the ducks make quick work of these, of all the snails. And they eat all the snails and they're gone. So, no, this is not a goose, Lisa Stewart. This is a duck. You know how I know? Because that's a goose. Totally different. I mean, I'm not a veterinarian or a a biologist, but I'm fairly certain that they're not the same. So, much longer in the body, much bigger, obviously, longer neck. Kind of wedge-shaped head. Geese are geese are kind of awful. They fly over our house almost every day, making a lot of noise, honking, in formation. And they have these kind of wedge-shaped heads. So yeah, it's a goose. Yes, as JJ says, we recommend it to everybody, this movie. We saw it in theater, but I think you can get it streaming now. The, is it called The Biggest Little Farm? Is that what it is? It is The Biggest Little Farm, right? Yeah. That's what she's called. All right. Let's try this. Get out of the way, Goose. Having a little, uh, little barn action. silo I'm not entirely clear on what barns are for exactly because they're different than stables right I'm not, are any of you guys farmers and you could maybe explain what the what, what the deal is with them because uh, I know that stables are where the animals sleep but I think they also sleep in a barn or is it just that horses and cows sleep in a stable E-I-E-I-O. All right. That's that. Nice little barn. Um, let's move on. We're moving quickly. I hope you're okay with that. I hope you're okay with that because I'm realizing now that uh, I've moved very quickly. But I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that. And here we have not a pug. Although there are similarities if you've ever seen them eat. Seeing a pug eat is, a th- is an amazing thing. They don't actually chew. They just inhale. Inhale. Inhale their food. Or at least that's what Twiggy does. Speaking of dogs, we have uh, a guest dog staying with us for a few days. His name is Blue. 
He is, uh, I think what kind of, uh, I'm not sure what kind of dog he is. Is he, I think maybe he's just a mutt, but he's kind of been shaven. <laughs> it sounds awful, but he's been uh, trimmed. So he's even more unrecognizably strange looking. And, um, yeah, he's, he's not really used to other dogs, but Twiggy has been extremely nice to him to try and get him to, uh, fit into the family for a few days. And we were expecting that he would be barking right now. We were, we were afraid that draw with me would become like howl and bark with me. The side serving of, uh, leaf blower. You know, I'm actually really happy with that pig. I mean, I've drawn pigs before, but that that might be a new a new high. Let me not ruin it by fiddling with it too much. Just, you know, better to leave that kind of a thing alone. Just leave it alone. All right, tractors. Those of you in Spark... You may remember that on Monday we drew a tractor. So I hope you don't mind doing it again. This is a different tractor than we drew on Monday in Spark. But uh, tractors are super cool. I mean, from a drawing point of view, I wouldn't want to necessarily want to drive one to work. But um, yeah, this is super cool. I mean, again, you could easily spend the weekend drawing this thing, don't you think? Picky if it, if it was uh, actually sitting in front of you. Might be even better. A really fun kind of thing to draw. I love drawing equipment. And, um, you know, these sorts of like things where you can see the engine is exposed. And that's really cool. The proportions are a bit off for this guy, alas. And it has that little chimney. I love that. I've never actually ridden on a tractor, I don't think. One of those things to look forward to. I have to ride one or drive one at some point in my life. No question about that. All right, a reasonable tractor. I've done better, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. That's the tractor. So let me let me have a look at that. Let me just get a wide look at that. Hold on a second. Um, sorry. Let me, there we go. Looks a little bit out of focus. But here's my page. Here's me. Here's me in the corner. Hey, yup, I'm Michael Stipe. Do you know that song, Losing My Religion, is... I was recently listening to a whole... I think it was a whole podcast about... In an interview, with, was it... Yeah, with Michael Stipe talking about that song, how he came to write it. And how kind of the person is sort of a pathological character who song is about. Here's me in the corner. Anyway, why am I talking about Michael Stipe? I'm trying to talk about farms. All right, well, this is, uh, what did I leave out? I thought about, like, sh what kind of a farm is this? This is like an animal-based farm, you know, but I could have drawn, like, maybe I need to draw, like, a fruit tree down here or something. And, uh, you know, thing. and then over here I could draw some sort of wheat or something, you know, fill it out. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye kind of thing. Although that looks more like, like 
some broccoli or something. The broccoli rob is as high as an elephant's eye. And uh, what else could I put? So then we could go in here and we could, uh, you know, just do a bit of augmentation. You know, again, this is the whole benefit of using white paper, I mean brown paper, is you get to put in a little bit of, uh, you know, a little something something afterwards. Or else why bother, right? So you got the natural brown paper, which is going to give you some tone. And then you got this goose. And then my pig might have a bit of bit of a highlight on the back of him there. And uh, maybe this is a nice white tractor. You know, I don't think it would be very practical to have a white tractor. Probably get quite dirty. Or a white tractor. These things tend to be green, John Deere green, right? And then certainly one wouldn't really have a white barn. That would be, I think that's against the law, actually. I think you have, barns must be red. So you know what? Just for the sake of it, I'm bringing in a bit of red. Didn't plan to, but I feel obliged. Because I mentioned that thing about that international, um, you know, the, uh, what's it called? the international agricultural depiction laws that uh, stipulate you don't have brown barns, they have to be red. So now that I've got the red thing out, of course, i got to go to town with it and start putting in red everywhere. So this chicken is going to get turned into a little red hen with red legs, and maybe a bit of a red comb. Sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing. So yeah, we're going to town. And then this tractor, which I made white, regretfully is now going to become red as well. This is what happens. You grab one color and suddenly you realize that your pig needs to have a little bit of color added to him as well. And uh, same here with this deal. It's sort of a pink harvester. Sort of, uh, there we go. All right, so there's a page of farm stuff. Now, theoretically, we could get into uh, writing some stuff. Could write about it. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to. But I am quite excited by how these colors are looking on the brown. So. I'm afraid, despite my original intentions, some other colors are entering into the picture. But maybe what I'll do is I'll just keep them in the warm realm. And I will just, I won't really go too hog wild, as it were. Keep the hog tame. Yes. Ah. <sighs> What else? Does the cappuccino paper work with ink, Deanna asks. It certainly can. You could draw on this with ink. Let's see what it says. It says, Traditionell Kunstler Papiere von Hannemühle werden nacht alten Rezepturen aus hochfertigen Rohstoffen und reinem Kellwasser hergestellt. Hannemühle kombiniert Jahren mit Innovation und Inspiration mit dieser Philosophie Künstler seit 1584. So, hmm, that doesn't really answer that question, but it does say here, non-absorbing surface for India ink, fountain pens, and acrylic markers. It doesn't mention colored pencils. I hope I don't get in trouble for that. I should be using something else, but yes. It's, it works very nicely. I was looking for my other one, but I think I've given them all away. Given it away. We gave away uh, a great, some great books last week, right? And um, a bunch of people wrote in, wanted them. So we'll be sending those out eventually. JJ, is that true? 
yes, once once leaf blowing season ends, then we'll have time to um, to do that. And yeah, all right, I'm done. I'm done with this, but we do have a couple of other things to take care of today. So let me go back to me, the full spectacle that is me. I was up early this morning because I had to give a talk. I gave a talk to a group of people in England on Zoom. It's the first kind of bit of like public speaking I've done it for a while, but it was kind of cool because I just did it in here. I didn't have to like go on a plane and stay in some conf convention center and staying at a podium. I just kind of got to do it here, which is kind of cool. Speaking of here, I'm thinking that I'm going to redo this room. I may completely change this room around. So this thing that you're seeing behind me, I'm getting kind of sick of it, sick of this whole configuration. And so I'm thinking, even though this has been the way it's this way for like a year, I'm now publicly announcing, which means I'm going to have to do it, that I'm going to be changing this around. And I'm going to be making something newer, better, cooler, different of this room. It's time, you know, it's time to mix it up and get something new. All right, speaking of something new, I wanted to share with you Kate's, um, Kate's, um, what's it called? Sketchbook. <laughs> I, as I said, I got up very early this morning. I got up so early and then I realized like I didn't have to get up that early because of the whole like time zone thing and the fact that Arizona, for some weird reason, doesn't change. Arizona doesn't believe in daylight savings time. So I told these people in England that I would be, that we would be doing it at a certain time, and then it wasn't that time. So I got up unnecessarily early, only to find out that I had another hour to sit around drinking tea. So by the time the thing started, I was super jacked on endless cups of tea, and half exhausted from getting up so early. And then, of course, here I am now. So you can hear me, jack, uh, nattering away on a caffeine jag um, for no good reason. Let me stop it. Let me stop this and say, here's Kate, Kate's sketchbook and some examples of how she works. I think it's really cool. And a pre-foreshadowing of Saturday. <gasps> That's not it, though. Here, this is it. I just marked some pages, but these are sketches. I used to go sit in the field like I would go hiking. My husband would be mountain biking. And I would wait for him by sitting there and sketching whatever was around and I'd mess around with color and um, just whatever I could find. Um, just little sketches of trees and mushrooms and I'd bring watercolor pencils, watercolor uh, to add color. This was a longer one when I had to wait really long for him. I just put a pile of leaves in front of me and started drawing it. Um, this was really fun. This has got a bunch of different stuff, a layer of colors and stuff. It was really, really fun to do. That one was really quick and really fun. Um, enjoyed that one as well. I remember these. These are pretty long ago, too. And that one, pen and ink. And then just um, a, a lady that... Uh, we, I was at a, a performance, and I just quickly sketched a lady that was uh, getting ready to go on stage. But anyway, so that's my sketchbook. But this is how I do it now. Um, I will take different surfaces. For instance, this is wood, so I can't do that in a sketchbook. And this is when I was messing around with acrylic pouring. So I would just get scraps of wood from my husband's wood pile and I would do that. And then um, I do a lot of sketches on different different papers. So these are little things of a little chick that we had and then just different, different little exercises, fur, just messing around with color. Um, this was a sketch done for at a live model, um, model session. So there's just different things, you know, messing around with color setups. Um, just different, you know, the mushroom, you recognize the mushroom. This is actually um, colored pencil with solvent, not watercolor pencil, but I was messing around with the color. So you can see I've, I'm trying to decide color choices and which which way I'm going to work this. So I, I mess around on the watercolor paper. And then, you know, little things like, you know, I'm working on a, this is a pea flower from a pea plant. And I'm just doing different takes on that and I'm just doing it on different papers. So. Um, I don't finish them. I, they're just sketches. And then I have all these like in a, in a little, um, I keep them in a drawer, in a flat file drawer. 
Then I've got like I was messing around with fur, and I have more of these. I, I don't. I have a pile. I, I did a whole series of messing around with fur. This is just like texture, which I also mess around with different textures and different things that my mediums will do. So you can see all these little things. I've got these little things. And I keep them all because sometimes I refer back to them. Um, sometimes I have writing on the back on these like that when I have, I've marked what I've done. If I'm organized that day, I mark what I have done. Um, oh, and then studies for, so this was a gouache study. Uh, watercolor and gouache, but this may be 100% gouache. Darn it, I didn't write it. So it's either 100% gouache or watercolor and gouache. But so I've got the different colors I'm trying out. Um, just a little radish in front of me, and just quickly sketch it with uh, watercolor. And then pen and ink and scratch board. I always do, you know, trying to figure out the different things I'm going to do. I actually did a piece of this that was larger scratch board, kind of practicing. Um, and then just different different surfaces, you know, like I did a whole bunch of these, like I, I could probably get 10 of these out on different papers. A tomatilla from my garden, um, different uh, flower where I'm just playing around with different background colors and just working on that. And then just, you can see my process here. This was for a bigger piece, messing around with mixing the colors. Um, so that's my process with sketchbooks. So I would call it a deconstructed sketchbook. And I have a drawer filled with little things like this. So that's my deconstructed sketchbook. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. She's good, right? I told you. She is very good. She is, she's really a master. And um, so that's, that's Saturday. That is Saturday. Um, and hopefully you will be joining me and Kate for this. Could you, could somebody just put the, uh, information about how to sign up for it? It's at sketchbookschool.com. You can just go there. You'll find it. But yes, it is there. Um, so I also wanted to say that I'm, while I'm not giving away the cappuccino book this week, we are giving away something in honor of Sunday, which is International Handwriting Day. Did you know that? International Handwriting Day, January 23rd, every year. And so we're going to be giving away this. We're giving away 10 of these, actually. This is really beautiful paper for hand lettering. It's from Hanamula. It's called the Hand Lettering Pad. Um, and it's a really, it's a really nice uh, paper for, for all different kinds of things. I'm not going to read it in German, but you can use brush pen, pencil, fine liner, various other things on it. So if you would like to get that, and I'm sure you would, uh, send us not a handwritten thing, but just uh, an electronically written thing, and send it to uh, info at sketchbookschool.com. Just send us an email saying, you know what, I think I'd like that. And you could tell us a bit more about why you'd like it. That would be cool. And we will be giving it away. So yes, as as Grace uh, is, has just discovered, handwriting is still a thing that you may say to yourself, I never write by hand anymore. And you know why? Because you don't have the hand lettering pad from Hanamula. But once you do, you might find yourself taking a computer keyboard and just simply throwing it out the window. Taking your telephone and simply tossing it in the trash. Because you're saying, you know what? I don't need it. I don't need them anymore now that I've got this. Yes. Um, as JJ points out, it is uh, USA only, alas. This is, the, this is because we're, it's Hanamula, um, Hanamula USA that's giving these things away. I'm sorry. All right. Where were we? Well, we've kind of covered, we've kind of covered it all, right? I mean, we have, uh, we've met Kate. We've drawn a farm, an entire farm. You know, there are other shows on YouTube where maybe you'll draw one animal. There are very few where you will draw an entire farm. You see that I'm kind of like in, I'm like in ad guy mode now. Yes, and before midnight tonight, we're gonna. Sh I'm like now. Now I'm starting to promote this channel. This is the only known YouTube show that. Waste your time by drawing geese and combines. Is that what you thought you were going to do when you woke up this morning? God, I, I need to draw a barn. 
Let me get onto YouTube and watch, see what Gregory's up to. All right, so write to info at sketchbookschool.com. Tell us why you want this thing, why you would like one of these pads, and we'll, we'll get it shipped out to you. Um, you know, while I'm in my promoting mode, though, maybe I will talk about a couple of other things quickly. Um, the Art for All podcast, wherever you enjoy podcasting, you will enjoy the mellifluous tones of yours truly and my buddy and uh, man I look up to, John Muir's, Muir Laws. John Muir Laws, Jack Laws, kind of the god of um, nature journaling. So this show has like gotten more and more sort of fascinating to me. We sit down every week, we email back and forth, and we think of a topic, and we go, okay, all right, I think this is a good topic. And then literally we just turn on the mic and we start talking, and we, we talk for an hour. Now you might say, the last thing I need is two men talking at me for an hour. That's certainly the way I feel about it. But strangely, a lot of people find it interesting. What we do is we make video recordings and we make podcasting recordings, which are actually the same recordings, but one has pictures and one doesn't. We put the podcast on the world of podcasting, so you can listen to it as you are, I don't know, uh, maybe mowing the back 40 or uh, feeding your geese, you can listen to the Art for All podcast as we talk about whatever it is we're going to talk about. Or you can watch it on YouTube and you can actually see our lips moving, our handsome visages as we explain the world to each other. That's the Art for All podcast. comes out every Monday. Sign up for it wherever you like. Um, I would say sign up for it here, by the way, because, uh, you know, this is a YouTube channel unless you're watching on a Facebook, in which case it's not a YouTube channel. But it actually it continues to be a YouTube channel, regardless of where you're watching it. And um, you can subscribe to it. You know, in fact, I know that you have not subscribed to it. Yes, I'm talking to you. It's time to subscribe to it. All you have to do is click on the little thing right beneath here. It's free. Just do it. If you subscribe, here's what happens. I come to your house. I feed your animals. I paint your barn, and I send you um, a video essay every Friday. Um, I give you a recording. Can you hear, can you hear those animals outside? I, I give you a recording of my conversation with, with Jack Laws. I show you draw with me. I do various other things. And all you had to do is click your mouse. It doesn't feel equitable somehow. I feel like I'm doing more than you are, honestly. So at the very least, do that. Okay, have I made my point? I believe so. What else do I want to tell you about? Here's another thing I would like you to do. Sign up for my essays, dannysessays.com. Every Friday, which is tomorrow, and now every Tuesday, I send out an essay. I have to say, of all the things I do, I think that that's the thing I enjoy doing the most. I enjoy it. Some people enjoy reading it. It's free also. Free. 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 Are you getting, are you getting the message? Free. It's all free. It's free. All you have to do, you do have to do a little bit of work. You have to type in 14 letters into your keyboard in order to get it. But that's it. That's all I ask. And I spend hours writing these things. You know why? Because I'm a really bad typist. All right. And finally, I don't know. That's it. I'm done. I'm done hawking. But wait, there's more, as Chris says. I'll also throw in this slightly chewed Winsor Newton uh, Kaminsky Sable brush. No, I'm not giving you that. Forget it. I've given you enough. Give you just people. You just keep taking and taking. <sighs> All right. I need to stop drinking coffee and I need to take a nap probably. And I need to work on starting moving this room around. When you come back, you're going to say, 
Is Danny in Versailles? Is he in the Taj Mahal? How, how, I'm, I'm confused. Is that green screen? Because that's the most gorgeous environment I've ever seen for a drawing demo. He's gone too far this time. He's gone too far. Not only is he giving away free paper, writing profound essays on parchment, talking until he's hoarse. <laughs> anyway, that's enough. I'll see you next week. Until then, I don't know, until then, just grab some of this free stuff. Why wouldn't you? It's a, you know, we live in a time of, of, uh, of, of freebies. Everything's free. Everything's free, except for the people. All right. Um, Betsy doesn't want her friends on Facebook to see her drawings. Why, Betsy? They're not even going to look at them. Nobody looks at anything on Facebook. Don't even worry about it. Just do it or do it on Instagram or join the schoolyard. Join the schoolyard. That's the answer. Join the schoolyard. But don't be so shy. Don't be shy. Oh, is somebody giving you another option? Yes. All right. Thank you. Let me stop before I put the other foot in my mouth. Have a great day.